Hey guys, it's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And guess what? Pi KVM can indeed be installed on the Raspberry Pi Zero. So let's get started. Now, if you haven't seen my previous videos on installing the Pi KVM on a regular Raspberry Pi 4 with the HDMI CSI 2 or even the prototype version of the Pi KVM, I'll leave the links on the top left corner right over here. But definitely I would check those out. Now, what we're gonna be doing today is actually installing the Pi KVM OS into the Raspberry Pi Zero. Now, this is yet another very cost efficient way of running a KVM or KVM over IP using the Raspberry Pi Zero, which is about $7 for the Wi-Fi module. And the HDMI CSI bus is about $32. So if you total that out, that's about $40. Now, the Raspberry Pi Zero is definitely a lot less power than the Raspberry Pi 4. It's only on a single core one gigahertz CPU. So the performance is not gonna be there but still very functional. Now a couple of things you need to note is that you have to use the HDMI to CSI bus because the micro USB port becomes unusable since it gets converted into a USB host device. What's another thing that's really cool about this is that because it is an underpowered device you can actually power it through the same port that you're going to plug your computer to. So you actually don't need to run a second micro USB cord to power it. I'm not worried about back feed because it's the same voltage that's going to be coming from and to the device. So yeah you could be able to plug this into a computer and have this running without having to use the extra micro USB for power. Now installing the OS on this guy is not as straightforward. He actually doesn't have a pre-made image. That's because when you create the image, you actually put in your Wi-Fi passwords and all that other stuff. And that's another thing to note because this device is also on Wi-Fi, the latency is a little bit more and I feel it's about like 400 to 500 milliseconds compared to the Raspberry Pi 4, which is 100 to 200 milliseconds. Now, before I jump into creating the operating system, there was a question I do wanna answer. The main question that I see you guys ask a lot is how's it compared to TeamViewer or VNC or RDP? Now, keep in mind, this is not that. TeamViewer or VNC or any desk or RDP requires the operating system to be installed. It's a software layer of remote desktop. While this guy doesn't require an operating system to be installed, this has access to the physical machine. So if you need to install an operating system, or even if you're trying to fix a computer that needs to go into safe mode that doesn't have internet access, this could achieve that. So it's two different things. This is actually giving you local access to the computer like you're physically sitting in front of it to access the BIOS, uh, boot up screens, or safe mode or anything like that. All right, so now let's jump into compiling the operating system. Here we are on my Linux desktop. I'm using this computer right over here. It does require Ubuntu 20.04 and above. Also requires a 64-bit machine. Now I'm gonna head over to his GitHub, which is PyKVM and PyKVM. Uh, click over to pages and uh, go over to building OS. He will actually have all the instructions here on how to build the OS for the Raspberry Pi Zero with the HDMI CSI bridge. So what I'm gonna do is basically follow the same thing. I have not done this on this computer, so um, everything is gonna be different. Let me um, arrange the windows properly so you could see what's going on and make that a little bit bigger. So it does require you to install Docker, which is pretty good because it doesn't mess with your environment right here. Uh, Docker will actually put it into its own environment. So whatever versions they're using to compile the software, you don't have to worry about. And at the end of this, I'm gonna show you a really cool software that he actually created, which is ingenious. I didn't even think about doing this until I used it on here. So first what I did was just uh, grab all the stuff that I need, which was make, curl, bin utilities. Next, I am gonna grab this, and this is to install Docker. So I'm gonna paste that right over here. sudo sh get docker, and that's gonna run. Give that a few minutes, and this will install the whole entire Docker. Now, I also learned a new command on my previous video, which is running the Pico with MicroPython, that when you use user mod with AG, you can actually do new GRP or new group, and instead of having to log out and log back in to refresh the group onto your username, that's what that command does. So I'm gonna give that a try because I haven't tried that yet. All right, so now that everything is installed, all I have to do is sudo user mod ag docker and my username. And if I do sudo new grp, hmm, how does that work? So I just do no sudo new grp. Maybe, I guess that works. All right, so now I'm gonna git clone the OS and uh, I'm gonna change my directory to download so I know where it's gonna be. And I'm gonna git clone the OS and don't worry about the space. That means it doesn't get saved in the history. I just did that by accident. Head over to OS and this is the main important part. We actually have to create a file called config.mk. 
it's not in here right now so we have to create it so nano config.mk and we're just going to start going on with board equals and this is going to be uh, zero zero w okay so zero w uh, platform equals v2 dash hdmi locale equals u u e n underscore u s time zone equals and if you guys don't know what the time zone you're in you can actually just open another terminal and head over to user share zone info and ls here and i'm in americas so that's the first thing i need to do uh, americas with an s no america and slash new york if you go into a subdirectory ls america you could actually see new york in here and that's where i'm at okay root password root you could change that right here web ui underscore admin web oh, pass wd oh this is supposed to be wd equals admin and ipmi password admin uh card is dev mmc blk yeah so zero and i'm just basically copying what he has over here now here's the important bit which is wi-fi e s s i d equals and then your wi-fi name and then wi-fi password and then the password over here okay all right now that everything's uh, done i actually went back in one more time just to fill those out um, we now do make os this takes a couple of minutes because it downloads everything it needs to and you know what it didn't work the user group i actually have to log out and log back in to grab the user so i could continue this process because new grp is it dash i should really rtfm this because i don't this is the first time i ever played around with this command so it might be something stupid that i'm not doing so you know what i'm just gonna log off and log back in real quick all right and we are back so what i'm gonna do is pop back over to the downloads os folder and in here i'm gonna do make os and there we have it it's running because i'm part of the docker group all right now it's done it took about 12 minutes or so even though on the ryzen 1700 but i did didn't do make you know j8 or anything like that so i was using single core just to do everything which is fine i think it needed to anyway because i had so many things i need to download anyway the next thing we need to do now is to make image instead of making install so if you make an image it'll actually create the disk image that you could later use raspberry pi imager to load onto your raspberry pi zero okay now that everything's all done i'm just going to list the directory you're going to see a folder called images and there we have our image which is the bz2 now i don't have raspberry pi imager installed in here let me see imager yeah i don't have the imager installed in here so to grab that raspberry pi imager download spelled that wrong but it should be fine and i am going to download this for ubuntu save the file once that's done just open it up install now it might not recognize that it's a bz2 so we might have to decompress that so let me choose the os use custom and head over to downloads os images and yeah it doesn't see it that means it doesn't support that file on here it might be different for windows i'm not i don't really remember zip to i think it's dash d decompress zero two there you go so i'm going to decompress the image using bz2 dash d and then the image name so it'll actually just give me the image file this way i could just import this into my raspberry pi imager 
All right, now that that is extracted, ls, you could see that there's an actual image file there. I'm gonna use custom, go back to OS, images, and there we have it, HDMI. I would definitely keep this stored somewhere so you don't have to recompile the image. In total time of this was about 20 minutes, so it wasn't too, too bad, but yeah, it's not too bad. Uh, choose SD card, so I could just uh, pop in the SD card here. Uh, there we go, and then you could just write to the disk. So it's gonna take about however long your SD card is gonna write. When you're done with that, we're gonna hook up the HDMI CSI bridge and then hook the HDMI cable to the device we're gonna be operating. In my case, it's an Odyssey x86. And then we're gonna use a micro USB cable plugged into the second port of the Raspberry Pi to the machine that we're gonna control on any USB port. Now, keep in mind that some machines don't have it where the power stays running even though the machine is off. So it does take a little bit more than normal to boot this up. If you need the instant access or you need to power off the machines, you might have to use that second power cord just to keep it powered. But in our case, if we're just going to plug this into a computer and we need to buy access the BIOS, we could just reboot the machine once to get back into it. And basically that's it. So let's check out this really cool software we were talking about. Okay, so I'm going to back out of the images folder and back into the main folder of OS. And what he has is this really cool thing called make scan, which is really smart. And I can't believe I didn't think to use it because I use that work all the time, which is ARP. And what he does is make a scan. He scans the network and ARP tables the entire network of any device that starts with the manufacturer ID, which is the first three pairs. So BA27EB would be the Raspberry Pi, DCA2, um, A632 would also be the other version of the Raspberry Pi. So let me see if I could... Uh, so I made this a little bit smaller, but and as you can see, I have a couple of Raspberry Pis running. Uh, four, which is Raspberry Pi 4s, and one, which is a Raspberry Pi 0. And this is my IP for the actual Pi KVM. So let's check that out. Now, right now, I actually have it plugged up to another Raspberry Pi. So let's do this. We're going to log in with admin, admin. You can see it already takes a little bit longer to load that screen. And I'm going to go over to the KVM and you can see this is it. Now, one of the things I did notice that we have to do is actually go over to system and turn down the image quality to about 35. That's where I actually get the best frame rates, about seven frame rates up to 10 sometimes. Uh, don't trust this. This does tell you what the frame rates are, but it's only when it needs to be. So it could go up to five to seven. Sometimes I hit like nine. It depends on what you're loading. And you could see the latency is so different. Like I pressed it already and it took like almost half a second for it to respond. So the latency is definitely a little bit slower. And what I'm, and you're able to control everything like you would normally do with the other KVM. So what I'm gonna do now is actually run the other Pi KVM. So what I did was actually something pretty cool. I'm gonna show you guys side by side. On the left side, we have Raspberry Pi 4 with the prototype board. And on the right side, we have the uh, Pi Zero. And I actually have both the outputs mirrored. So basically on the Raspberry Pi that I have, the two HDMI ports, HDMI Zero and HDMI One, are plugged up to the devices individually. So it's actually a mirrored. So if I was to hit menu, you could see the animation is so much better on the Pi 4 versus the Pi Zero. And the quality, obviously, this is at 80% compared to the 35% on the right side. And if I was to say, uh, open a file program, and that already opened, and you could see how slow the mouse is trailing with the pointer that I have, but on the left side, it actually moves really smoothly compared to the right side with the mouse. So the latency is like a lot less using the Raspberry Pi 4, and I definitely get way much more better frame rates. Whoops. I didn't mean to double click that. I just mean to move this around and you could see like the right side is not even, it's jumpy. And the left side is really, really smooth compared to what I have on the Raspberry Pi Zero. But ultimately, they're both very functional. The thing I really like about this is that I could utilize another Raspberry Pi Zero project because I have these laying around and because they're underpowered, I haven't really used these that much. But with this, I can now actually utilize this and use it for something good, you know? So it's great that it works on the Raspberry Pi Zero. And the reason why it works really well compared to a Raspberry Pi 3 or Raspberry Pi 2 is because the Zero and the Pi 4 
both have OTG. So it allows you to convert the port into a USB host device, which allows you to communicate with your keyboard and mouse and also have the other features that he added like image and uh, ethernet sharing. Anyway, that's it for me guys. If you guys have any questions about this, hit it down in the comments below. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say, my Nerd Cave, hack till it hurts.